Stop, don't skip, because things just got seriously wild. Imagine this. You're casually strolling down Hollywood Boulevard, soaking in the glitz and glam, when out of nowhere, you find yourself in front of not one, not two, but 12 of the biggest celebrities on the planet. And guess what? Someone clicked a picture, and now it's taking the internet by storm. Prepare yourself, because here's the twist. Brace for a journey into the whirlwind of fame, fortune, and a touch of unforeseen turmoil. Before moving forward, affirm your belief in God by commenting yes. Keep in mind our existence is influenced by what we receive, but the true meaning of life lies in what we give. A humble $40 contribution can offer sustenance for a child for several days. Are you ready? The universe has an exciting announcement just for you today. Imagine this. Your picture, alongside 12 renowned celebrities, has suddenly become a sensation online. Why? Because you are destined for something truly remarkable. Believe me, this isn't your ordinary message or a mere attention-grabbing gimmick. It's a divine sign, a gentle nudge from the cosmos indicating that you're meant for greatness. Now, let's explore what lies ahead for you. Are you curious? Simply say, universe, show me my path and let's embark on this adventure together. So, who were these 12 celebrities and how did you end up in a photo with them? Were you merely in the background by chance, or were you a special guest? Perhaps you were even one of them incognito. Now, here's the ultimate question. Why you? What sets you apart from the rest of the world? Perhaps it's your hidden talents, untapped potential, or the dreams that fuel your ambition. Whatever it may be, there's something truly unique about you. Let's delve into something incredibly thrilling today. Picture this. Suddenly, everyone is buzzing about you because your photo with 12 celebrities has gone viral across the internet. It's on every social media platform, making headlines on news channels, and photographers are camped outside your home. It's like a scene from a movie, but here's the twist. This isn't just about fleeting fame. It's about discovering that special spark within you. That spark ignites your passion and propels you towards your loftiest goals. Even amidst all the newfound attention, remember to stay grounded and focused on your journey ahead. Stay authentic to yourself. Now, let's delve into the true essence of destiny. Is being destined for greatness solely about achieving fame, fortune, or grand victories? Or is it more about making a lasting impact on the world, leaving a legacy that transcends time? In reality, Destiny is intricately woven into the journey rather than the destination. It's about self-discovery, gradual growth, and overcoming obstacles. Embrace the process of learning from mistakes and celebrating every small victory along the way. Remember, the true magic lies not only in reaching your dreams, but in the pursuit of them. Today, let's discuss a crucial topic, your destiny and the transformative power of self-belief. Surprisingly, your confidence in your own abilities and the boundless opportunities available can work wonders. It has the potential to turn your aspirations into reality, convert challenges into opportunities, and empower you to emerge stronger from adversity. When doubts creep in or fear tries to take hold, remind yourself of this. You hold the reins of your destiny. You are the captain of your journey. Believe in yourself and the universe will align to help manifest your dreams. Repeat to yourself, I believe in the power of my dreams and feel the inner strength surge within you. Now, let's address those who may cast doubt on your aspirations. Remember, their skepticism reflects their own fears and limitations, not your true worth. Instead of seeking their approval, trust your instincts, follow your heart, and let your actions speak volumes about your resilience. Overcoming these doubts demonstrates the greatness within you. As you embark on this journey of self-discovery and growth, affirm, I trust in my journey to silence any naysayers. Are you prepared to embrace this adventure? Let's navigate it together. 
And don't overlook the subtle signs and delightful surprises that life presents a chance encounter, a stroke of luck, or a mysterious message in the cosmos. Embrace the belief that everything unfolds according to a greater purpose. Embrace the unknown, the uncertainty, and relish the enchantment of life unfolding in unexpected ways. Affirm to yourself, I am open to the universe's guidance and prepare to welcome all the blessings heading your way. Now, let me narrate a tale about hope and perseverance akin to your own quest for greatness. Once upon a time, in the bustling heart of a vibrant city, there lived a young woman named Lily. Lily was an ordinary girl with big dreams and a kind heart. She worked tirelessly at her job, hoping to make a difference in the world one day. One sunny afternoon, while strolling through the city streets, Lily stumbled upon a commotion outside a luxurious hotel. Curious, she edged closer and realized that a crowd had gathered around a group of celebrities who were attending a charity event. Caught up in the excitement, Lily couldn't resist snapping a quick picture of the scene with her phone. Little did she know that this seemingly insignificant act would change her life forever. As Lily returned home that evening, she absent-mindedly posted the photo on her social media accounts. To her surprise, the image quickly gained traction, spreading like wildfire across the internet. News outlets picked up the story, and before long, Lily's photo with the 12 celebrities had gone viral. Suddenly, Lily found herself thrust into the spotlight, bombarded with interview requests and media attention. But amidst the whirlwind of fame and fortune, Lily remained grounded, remembering the values instilled in her by her upbringing. Instead of basking in the limelight, Lily used her newfound platform to raise awareness for causes close to her heart. She donated a portion of her earnings to charity and volunteered her time to help those in need. Through it all, Lily remained humble and true to herself, never forgetting the importance of kindness and compassion. And as she continued on her journey, she inspired others to do the same. The moral of Lily's story is clear. Sometimes, life has a way of surprising us when we least expect it. But it's what we do with those surprises that truly matters. By staying true to ourselves and using our gifts to make a positive impact, we can turn even the most unexpected circumstances into opportunities for growth and change. The Father says today, fix your eyes forward. Don't get bogged down by the limitations you've set for yourself or the boundaries others have tried to impose. You hold within you a capacity for more, a potential waiting to be unleashed. It's time to dream bigger. Don't be afraid to envision a future that seems out of reach. The dreams you hold are a reflection of the kingly nature I placed within you. The cross secured your victory, and these dreams are the whispers of that victory urging expression. When I spoke through the prophet Joel about the pouring out of my spirit, I envisioned a people overflowing with dreams and visions, a multitude empowered to see beyond the present. That's exactly what I've poured into you, the fire of a dreamer, the foresight of a visionary. Don't stifle those gifts. Embrace the desires stirring within you. Your role is to paint the picture, to set the course with your dreams. Leave the fulfillment to me. I take immense pleasure in weaving your aspirations into reality. So, dream big. Don't be confined by practicality or doubt. Let your dreams be audacious prayers, a declaration of the faith burning brightly within you. I am here to turn those dreams into a resounding victory. You see, says the Father, you are an inheritor of the entitlements of Christ that he earned through his sinless life and vicarious death. The death of the cross was not only about taking away sin, suffering, sickness, or deprivation. The death of the cross released a personal covenantal impartation to you, intended to transform your life. I have bonded the spiritual genetics of my wholeness, lordship, and authority into your very being. You are bone of my bone, made in my image as I said in my word. The Father says today that you are my declared inheritor. Say this and know it as your portion from my hand. 
You have inherited the blessings once bestowed upon Abraham. I will bless those that bless, but I will execrate those from your life that even dare to trifle with you in the least. I will bless you coming and going in all of your affairs today. So expect and trust that I am moving ahead of you to settle all your concerns. No need to look with trepidation on the days ahead, but with eager anticipation. For I, the Lord your God, have marked them with purpose and grace. Just as my banner fluttered proudly above the ancient armies of Israel, so it overshadows your life. Its image, a mighty eagle soaring on the wind, spoke of victory, of unwavering protection. That is the banner I have unfurled over you for the year 2024. My presence, like that eagle's shadow, will ever be upon you, guarding your steps and shielding you from harm. I am Jehovah Nissi, your banner of victory, your unwavering shield. Remember, too, the stories of angels, those unseen warriors of the heavens who fight on behalf of those who trust in me. I have made your very being a rallying point for them, child. Their whispers will guide your choices, their wings will brush against your face in moments of comfort, and their hands will be ready to intervene when shadows threaten to engulf you. Do not be surprised, then, when you see their subtle activity woven into the tapestry of your days. And know this, my child, when the world fails you, when those who promised comfort turn away, when even the ground beneath your feet feels shaky, fear not. For I am your anchor, your unwavering rock. Though friends may falter and family drift, my hand will stay firm, holding you fast throughout the storm. Do not, however, dwell in bitterness over those who have neglected you or shirked their duty. Forgive them, for they are but travelers on their own paths guided by their own lights. Release your expectations, let go of the wounds they inflicted, and entrust them to my care. I will heal the hurts, mend the shattered trust, and carry you until the storm passes. Know that, at times, you will be on point in the battle, leading others and setting an example even for those who have no desire to go on in the things of my spirit. Even those who love you, with the best intentions in their hearts, may stumble and leave you feeling dispirited. But I will never fail you. I am your constant companion, your ever-present help. Trust in my presence, for my word is your compass, my love your shield, and my power your unfailing comfort. This year, I declare a season of no lack, no denial, and no delay. The blessings you have longed for, the dreams you have held close, are about to take flight and be the upward force lifting you high above all principalities and powers. Take heart, for your time of reaping has come. The path ahead may twist and turn, but I will be your guide, your rock, and your banner of victory. Walk boldly, embrace the challenges, and let my promise be your song in the year of 2024. Do not allow the insinuations of the world to drown out my voice. Come to me in your quiet moments, in your triumphs and your tears, and allow my words to wash over you. For in me, you will find the strength to face any storm, the wisdom to navigate any path, and the love that endures beyond all understanding. So come, my child, walk with me this year, and let your heart be a canvas upon which I paint a masterpiece of grace and purpose. Let go of your fears, release your anxieties, and step into the year 2024 with the banner of my love waving high above you. I am with you, always. The Father reassures you today that even amidst uncertainty, He has already guided your heart in the direction you need to go. While those around you may not comprehend or endorse your chosen path, His divine plan for you remains steadfast. In moments of seeking reassurance and solace, he offers both, but he also brings forth action. His presence isn't passive, it's deeply intertwined with your circumstances. The sacrifice made on the cross was not for distant observation, but for an active and intimate involvement in your life. Just as decisively, he is actively engaged in your present challenges. 
Though the road ahead may seem tangled and unclear, he is tirelessly working at the core of your being to bring about resolution. Trust in his active presence and his unwavering commitment to lead you forward, even when the way seems uncertain. Now, don't expect a miraculous fix to suddenly appear out of thin air. This is a collaborative effort. While I extend my hand, I also require your cooperation. Here's what I'm asking. Be vigilant. Keep an eye out for subtle shifts, unexpected opportunities, and doors that seem to open effortlessly. Recognize them as my influence, my subtle interventions. Don't brush them off as mere coincidences. Instead, acknowledge and celebrate them. Speak openly about my role in these unfolding events. Let your voice serve as a beacon, declaring my presence and activity. This isn't about pride. It's about recognizing the divine at work. Furthermore, cooperate with me. Provide some cooperation, and I'll bring about change. Take a moment to reflect on that. When these opportunities arise, don't hesitate or resist. Step forward with confidence. This is your part in our partnership. Trust that I am guiding you and proceed in faith. Let nothing deter you from the path I'm paving for you. It leads to your destiny, the purpose I set in motion long before time began. Walk it boldly, knowing that I am by your side every step of the way. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the word of the Lord from James 5, verse 16. So stop doubting. Prayer changes everything. Keep praying until something happens. Now, these words are very comforting, and yet it's easy to forget the sheer weight and power of these words, especially when the storms of life threaten to capsize our little boats. So you may be asking, what does it mean when we say that prayer changes everything? What does it mean when we say, stop doubting and keep praying until something happens? Today, I will talk about this powerful spiritual weapon that can make a big difference in your life. You know, talking to God is like talking to your best friend. It's that comforting voice in your ear, always there to listen, always there to guide you. What we have to remember is that prayer is a two-way street. It's not just about asking for what we want. It's also about listening, opening our hearts, and letting God speak to us. When we truly listen, we start to hear the wonderful things God wants for us. We start to hear the instruction that God gives us concerning our situations. And that's the miracle of prayer. And that's how prayer changes everything. Can you remember the time when Peter, one of Jesus' best friends, was locked up in jail? His friends were really worried and didn't know what to do. So they turned to prayer. They asked God for help. And guess what happened? An angel appeared in Peter's cell and walked him right out of there. This wasn't because his friends had a magic wand. They had something more powerful. They had prayer. And their prayer didn't just change their feelings. It brought about a real big change in the world around them. But that's not all. Even when things don't go exactly as we asked, prayer still has a big impact. It changes us from the inside. It connects us with God. It gives us peace, patience, and strength to face anything. So prayer doesn't always change the situation in the way we sometimes expect, but it always changes us, making us more like Jesus.I in the Bible. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. This just means that when we talk to God about what we want or need, He hears us. He's ready to help us when we ask Him. The Bible tells us that prayer is powerful. It can do so much good. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, we are told that if we ask anything according to God's will, He listens. Isn't that great news? So when we pray, we're not just talking into thin air. We're having a chat with God, and He's ready and willing to help us. He wants to listen to us and talk with us. That's the amazing power of prayer. Now, when we say prayer changes everything, it's a big statement, isn't it? But it's true. And to understand it better, let's look at some examples. Jabez was a man in the Bible who knew all about how prayer could change everything. You can find his story in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, his mother had named him Jabez because his birth had brought her great pain. 
But Jabez didn't want to live a life of pain and sorrow. So you know what he did? He prayed to God. He asked God to bless him, to help him, and to keep him from harm so that he would not suffer. And guess what? God answered Jabez's prayer. God gave him what he asked for. This shows how prayer can bring big changes into our lives. Prayer is truly powerful. Now let's look at a story from our own time. There was a man named Nicky Cruz. He used to be a gang leader, and his life was full of violence and crime. But one day, he met a man named David Wilkerson, a preacher who prayed for him. Nicky laughed at him at first, but David didn't give up. He believed in what it says in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So David kept praying for Nikki. And you know what? Nikki's life completely changed. He left the gang and started helping other people instead. Today, he is the founder of Nikki Cruz Outreach, an evangelistic Christian ministry. And he is also the author of several Christian books. His story shows us that prayer really can change everything. But there's something we need to remember. Sometimes when we pray, it seems like God isn't answering straight away. Does that mean he's not listening? No way. God is always listening. But sometimes he wants us to keep praying, to keep asking. This is what Jesus taught us in the story of a man who went to his friend's house late at night. In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 10, the scripture says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, you know, sometimes we all have doubts. It's a part of being human. Even the man in the Bible whose son was not well had doubts. His story is in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 24. He said to Jesus, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. He was honest about his doubt, but he asked Jesus to help him with it. And that's okay. We can ask God to help us when we have doubts, but how can we fight these doubts? How can we make our faith stronger? One big way is through prayer. When we talk to God and listen to Him, it can make our faith stronger. It's just like when we spend time with a good friend. The more time we spend with them, the better we get to know them, and the more we trust them. It's the same with God. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When we hear God's word, when we pray and listen to him, it helps us believe more. And when we believe more, it helps us to have less doubt. But what if we need wisdom to deal with our doubts? The Bible has an answer for that too. In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So not only can prayer make our faith stronger, but it can also give us wisdom to fight our doubts. Remember, doubt is normal, but don't let it win. Keep praying, keep trusting God, and let His Word make your faith stronger. But it's important to remember that God's wisdom surpasses ours. He sees the bigger picture that we can't see. His ways and thoughts are higher than ours, as the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, verses 8-9. to when it seems like God isn't answering our prayers, it could be for several reasons. One such reason is that we might be asking amiss or with wrong intentions. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible talks about asking with wrong motives to fulfill our own selfish desires. When we pray with the intent of self-gratification or for things that do not align with God's will or His plans for us, we may find that these prayers go unanswered. Or maybe the timing isn't right yet. Or perhaps what we are asking for isn't ultimately the best for us. Or it might be that God is using the situation to grow our faith and character. God is our loving Father, and He wants the very best for us. Sometimes, this means He doesn't give us what we want when we want it. 
but we can always trust in his love and wisdom, knowing that he is working all things together for our good. But the Bible tells us something important about this. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. This means that God has a perfect time for everything. It may not be our time, but it's always the best time. This is also told in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. This tells us that even if what we're praying for seems slow in coming, we need to be patient and wait for it. And one more thing. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's not slow. He's patient and he wants what's best for us. Now here's another interesting story from the Bible about not giving up in prayer. It's about a man named Jacob. The story is in the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 32. Verses 22. One night, Jacob found himself wrestling with a man until dawn. He didn't give up, even when the man put his hip out of joint. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And you know what? The man gave Jacob a new name, Israel, and he blessed him there. Jacob didn't give up. He kept wrestling until he got his blessing. That's a lot like prayer. Sometimes we have to keep praying, keep wrestling with our worries and doubts until we get our blessing. We have to be patient and persistent. And when we do that, just like Jacob, we'll see that prayer can bring blessings and growth in our lives. So keep praying until it happens. Today, we've learned that prayer is like talking and listening to God. It's a way we can ask for help, thank Him for His blessings, and even tell Him about our doubts and fears. And we've seen how powerful it can be for Jabez and the Bible to Nikki Cruz in our own time. We've seen how prayer can really change things, and I'm sure some of us have our own testimonies as well. We've also learned that it's okay to have doubts. Doubting is just a part of being human, but we can't let doubt win. We can pray about our doubts and ask God to help us with them. And we can trust in His Word, which tells us that faith comes from hearing His Word. But perhaps one of the biggest things we've learned is that we need to be patient and keep praying. Like Jacob in the Bible, we need to be persistent. And we need to remember that God's timing is the best timing. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. That means we should always be praying, always be talking and listening to God. And in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace, that sense of calm and well-being that comes from knowing that God is with us, that's what prayer can bring. So I encourage all of us to commit to praying without ceasing. Make prayer a part of your daily routine. Let's be like Jacob, like Jabez, like David Wilkerson who kept praying for Nikki Cruz. Let's keep praying, no matter what, because prayer can change everything. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our faithful and loving God. Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are my creator and my counselor, guiding me daily to make wise decisions. Gracious God, you are my comforter in sorrow, pain, and distress. I come before you today with a humble and open heart. I thank you for your grace, I thank you for your love, and for the gift of life. Lord, I am grateful that you're always there for me in the good times and the bad. Lord, I pray for a shift in my life and circumstances. I ask that you will unlock doors of opportunities for me, bring healing to my body, and bring about change in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for the times that I let doubts creep in. Lord, I rebuke every temptation to doubt in the name of Jesus. I pray for faith that moves mountains, for the strength to stop doubting, and to keep praying until it happens in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over fear and doubt. I declare that I will not be moved by what I see or hear, but by the Word of God, which is the truth eternal and unchanging. Lord, I ask for you to guide my thoughts so that they may align with your will. 
May you touch my heart that it may be full of love, courage, and forgiveness. Lord, may you touch my spirit that I may be filled with your peace. Father, I recognize that I need your guidance every step of the way. Help me to be patient, to wait on your perfect timing. I thank you, Lord, that you will work all things together for my good. I rebuke the spirit of impatience or frustration in the name of Jesus. I declare that I will pray without ceasing. Lord, help me to keep trusting and keep believing. Help me to continue praying until my change comes, for I know that you are a faithful God who never fails. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and over the lives of my loved ones, that it may be a testament to your glory. May my words and actions reflect your love and grace. I rebuke any form of negativity or unkindness in my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the power of prayer, for the privilege of coming to you, for the assurance that you hear me. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your never-ending love and grace. Lord, I pray for a breakthrough, for a turnaround, and for an overflow of your blessings in my life. I know it's not by my power nor by my might, but by your Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me that I should keep praying until it happens. Lord, I want my prayers to reflect your righteousness. Teach me to pray for things that align with your plans and your purposes. Guide my words and thoughts so that I don't ask out of selfish desires, but in a way that seeks to honor you and further your kingdom. Lord, just as I pray for change in my own life, I pray for change in the lives of my loved ones. As I place them before you, Lord, may they come to know and experience your love and grace in a profound and personal way. Where there is pain or sickness, may you bring healing. Where there is confusion, may you bring clarity. Where there is unrest and instability, may you bring peace. And where there is doubt, may you instill faith. Lord, I rebuke any negative influence and every power of darkness over our lives and our relationships in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord for the assurance that as I make my request known to you, you are listening. I thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, you are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, 
inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the One who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. 
Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord, I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then, I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.